don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's time for another Artsy Trio collaboration over on the Artsy Trio Facebook group. So once again, working with Big Rob and Gina Ahrens to put forward a mood board that's been curated this month by Gina and the theme is Acknowledging Nature's Intentions. So let me turn over to my overhead camera and I'll show you what I'm going to create. So this is Gina's curated mood board for um, well it's February now but actually this is the one that's supposed to carry you through to March that's why we do it at the end of the month so this is March's mood board so as you can see there are lots of blues and golds and a few little drops of green in there but it's all about nature so that's what I'm going to kind of focus on today so let me just zoom back out again there we go not too far don't want me to zoom in onto my lap, do you? Right, so let me just move that mood board to one side and I'll show you what I've got for the colours. So I've pulled out some of my um, acrylic inks. So we've got blues, we've got golden yellows, we've got two different types of green, but I've also got white. But I'm also going to be using some white gesso today. And for my kind of nature elements, I've actually got some wood. So these are, um, it's waste actually, um, from when I've done some laser cutting in the past. So these are shapes that kind of like fell out of the middles, dropped out, and um, would otherwise have gone into the bin um, and gone into landfill. But because they're wood, then it's still nature. And I've also got um, a little heart there from one of the primitive heart sets as well. But I've also got um, a wood chip bird. So this is an MDF bird from a, a laser cutting set which I'll be releasing in the next month or so. So and in this set you'll but there's about four or five um, different birds, different shapes, some flying, some just silhouettes, um, which I think are really, really nice. So I'm going to incorporate this onto the page as well. So it's going to be a kind of a weighty <laughs> kind of textured page today but to start off with what I want to do is I want to put a background down so I've actually got a napkin that I've had in my stash for absolutely ages and it's got um, images um, of plants and flowers on there and I'm going to just use two of the pieces so let me just move my journal to one side and I've got some water and I've got a paintbrush and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of wet it to sort of diffuse the pattern a little bit. There we go. So that's wet along there now. Um, it's a three-ply three napkin and I've taken the top ply off. That just leaves the, the white left. So once you wet it, you can just kind of tear it where you've wet it and now you have two bits that you can use. So I'm going to use this for the base part of um, my journal page. So bring the book back in again. So that's going to sit about that. I don't mind the fact that it's overlapping just at this moment in time because um, I can trim that off later. So, but I just want to centre those up on the page. So, to do that, I'm going to be adding some matte medium. So, this is um, slap it on. That's what it's called. Slap it on. That's what it says on the label. Um, and this is from Indigo Blue. So, because it's a napkin, it's very very thin. So, you don't really need to do both sides. You don't need to do the top and the bottom. And I am just using a small brush, which I really should have used a larger one. And I'm going to try not to touch the matte medium because I'm kind of sensitive to it. If I get any on my hands, which I'm probably going to do anyway, um, it pulls my skin off. Okay, so just lay that down towards the bottom. And I'm bound to get some wrinkles in it. That's just the nature of the beast. 
and just smooth it out with the brush from the middle towards the edges and that should hold it. Like I said I am going to get a couple of wrinkles in Okay, so that's down there, so we'll just add a bit more on top, now just to seal it in. So just brushing from the centre all the way to the outside. Because it's a thin tissue, like I said, it'll just soak straight through. Right, I may need to add just a tad more. That's it. Just make sure it's all evenly coated. I think this napkin was once sent to me in Happy Mail a couple of years ago. I don't tend to throw napkins away when they're sent. I was trying to save them just in case because you always end up finding the perfect napkin for the project that you're trying to do. And whenever I go to the supermarket I always have a little wander down the party aisle just to see what they've got, just in case there's a, a nice pattern that can be purchased. And sometimes I ended up having to buy maybe like 20 napkins when I, only, when I only want one. So while that's still wet, I'm just going to use the brush just to kind of get rid of that excess off the edge. And I don't mind if it rips a little bit of the, I told you I'd get some on my fingers. I mean you could wait until it dries and then just use a, a knife or a pair of scissors but I kind of like that deckle edge that it gives you when you rip. There we go. Perfect. Go into the bin. Now if you were so inclined you could theoretically lay another one just by cutting round the shapes just to give it that kind of um, all over feel but I kind of like it just half and half so let me just get this dried off quickly. Napkins now dry so I've brought out one of my stencils this is the nucleus stencil there you can see it better so this is one of my new five and a half by eight size stencils which is obviously available on my website right now. So I'm going to use that because it's got that circular kind of theme that I want for the background. So I'm going to lay the stencil down to grab some texture paste and I'm just going to scrape through just to get some of those kind of circular shapes. I don't mind if they're not perfect. Or you're just getting the edges of some of the circles as long as you've got that kind of sweeping motion where you can see the edges of circles or the impression of circles I'm going to be happy so I'm going to lift that off there we go and then I'm going to turn it around a little bit just there and add some more just at this side and this stencil is one of those ones where it doesn't matter um, whether it's up, down, left or right it still gives you a good background pattern just 
bring some down over the tissue as well and then lift that back up again there we go maybe if I can just squeeze in a smaller circle just down there somewhere grab some more I'm definitely gonna have to go to the shop and grab some more texture paste and let's see maybe just in that corner there Perfect. And maybe one up there. Lovely. Okay, so I'll get that dried off. I'll go and get this cleaned up. Obviously, I'm going to wash this in lukewarm water before it dries in the sink using a an old toothbrush just to get rid of uh, all the, the texture paste in the um, on the inside of the circle. So I'll be right back. Okay, so my stencil is all clean now. While I was washing it, I had this sinking feeling that I'd actually called it the wrong name, I'd given it the wrong name. Um, it's Nucleus. I think I might have said cellular. It's not, this one's called Nucleus. There you go, so just in case. <laughs> you know when you just have that sinking feeling. Okay, so what I need to do is just quickly get this dried off a bit more, and then I'll be right back. The texture paste is now dry enough to touch. So what I want to do is just to add some gesso to that page. Now we've added matte medium, um, which shouldn't really make that much of a, a difference for spreading paint and things. So it does kind of like act almost like a clear gesso. Let me just widen out just a tad. There we go. Um, but I'm going to add white gesso anyway. So I've got my Dina Wakely white. There we go, which is quite gloopy. I've got a paintbrush and I've got some water just to the side here because I want to water the gesso down just a little bit. There we go, that should do it. And then just kind of knock back the napkin image a little bit. Just knock it back into the background a bit more. Just brushing it into all the little kind of like nooks and crannies where the texture paste has gone over the top. this will die back when it's dried and almost become like a ghost of itself you'll still be able to see it through obviously you can see it now so when the gesso dries it will come through just a little bit more let's just have a bit more water get everything covered. The texture paste with it being um, porous will just accept the paint anyway so that's fine but we'll just add a little bit just for bit of a tooth between the texture paste. Just quickly. If I've missed a few areas it doesn't matter. As we like to say. Embrace the imperfection. I 
think that'll do. That will do. I'll just use up that excess just in that bottom there. Okay, and like always, it's 10% art, 90% drying. <laughs> I should have that done on a t-shirt, shouldn't I? The gesso's now dried on there, so I'm going to start gluing down my shapes for my composition. So we're going to put the bird, obviously, somewhere kind of over here, not obviously, I'm going to put the bird somewhere over here. So I want to start building up those kind of background shapes just to give it a little bit of a bridge just for it to sit on. So let's just move so about there I think. So I'm going to use some grab and go glue from Indigo Blue. I'm just going to squeeze. Now I fell foul of this one before. There's a little cap in there, isn't that? I need to take it out first. Before you can get the glue out. There you go. <laughs> I did fall foul of that previously. I'm glad I remembered. Otherwise I'd have been doing this for hours. Okay, so I've got a little twist nozzle, which will just, I can just open big enough just to get enough glue out. So I'm not going to push it down too hard. There we go. That's fine. So this is a form of PVA. Going to be where the bird's going to sit. Let me just push it a little bit further that way. That will do nicely. So what I can do now that I've got the basic shape for where the bird's going to sit, I can now start building up some shapes underneath. Just random kind of placements. And I've got different sizes. Tell I'm concentrating now, can't you? Because I've stopped talking. And I'm kind of placing them where we've got littles. and bigs. So just sort of, well I won't say necessarily random-ish, but they are kind of random. And then just to kind of counterbalance, I'm going to put one down here. Or I'm going to put a group of three just down there.
and then a little just like that and then just because I can just start in filling a few of the smaller ones and I'm going to add just one to the back of the bird itself so that when I stick it down it will be supported so I'm going to leave that there to dry I've got two more circle so we'll add another one down there and I think one more just for variety about there I have got lots more but I think that's going to be enough so they're going to need just a little persuasion or a little bit of time just to try so I think it might be prudent maybe just to stick the birdie down now so head tail and feet and of course on that dot and then I'm going to put something a little bit weighty just on there just to hold it down Maybe something a bit heavier there we go perfect and if there's a bit of glue just squirting out it will dry clear anyway so I wouldn't worry too much there we go and I'm just going to leave that for probably about a quarter of an hour and if you see any of the circles kind of like lifting up because of the paper buckling then we just add a couple of bits maybe just to hold them down okay I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll be back in a few minutes okay so the glue has started to grab and hold um, but I've just added and um, before it's got too dry um, I've added a little blob I'm um, using some liquid pearls that I had in my stash for absolutely ages um, for the eye just to give it a little bit of texture I'm also just going to kind of um, take a guess at pretty much where I think the wings going to go just about there I think And then we just add a couple of kind of like detail lines. Now this um, liquid pearls will dry and it will stay um, kind of domed. I know that's not perfect, but that's pretty much. Um, let me just see if I can just bring that around. There we go. That's more like it just gives you the impression so that will dry domed like glossy accents does it stays kind of domed um, so that when you apply paint over the top you'll still get that texture coming through that domed effect coming through but you can knock it back and just make it part of the overall background pattern or composition if you like so I'm gonna leave that to dry for a bit longer I'll go and make myself a cup of tea and I also forgot to add the heart <laughs> which I've now done <laughs> so I'll be back in a little while okay everything's now kind of dry nothing's gonna fall off the page the 
um, liquid pearls are dry enough for me to be able to paint over the top which is exactly what we're going to do now. So I've got white gesso again, this time I've got some indigo blue white gesso. I haven't swapped for any particular reason other than I've just picked this one up. <laughs> um, I don't know what I've done with the, the um, Dina Wakely one, I've put it down somewhere and I don't know where it is. I know, I'll have one of those days. Right, so white gesso from Indigo Blue. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and paint over everything. The whole blooming lot. So all of the circles, all of the MDF pieces, all get a coating of the white gesso. And then as we're going over the birdie, we'll also paint over the top of that liquid pearls and as you can see you've still got the texture and the shape of it that detail but it's now paintable so the fact that it was green to start off with didn't make any difference so because now we can change the colour to whatever we want and we've still got that texture which is exactly what we wanted. So just going around the chest, around all the edges, just trying to get rid of those dark um, burnt edges where it's been laser cut. And then we'll paint the heart. Okay, so this is going to take me another well, a couple of minutes to finish doing all the same thing and literally all you're doing is just watching paint dry now. So I'll go away, finish with the white gesso and then I'll be back when I'm ready to add some more colour. Gesso is now dry, it's still a little bit warm so we're now going to start adding some of that colour. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just give these acrylic inks a shake up and then I'm going to, the, each of them have got little like droplets, pipette droplets if you like, and I'm just going to randomly drop it around the page over and across just randomly drop it so and then I'm going to activate with the water and then we can allow it to run and do what it needs to or what it wants to And then I can add a bit more just to encourage it in certain areas. So that was the um, antique brown, so that's like the base coat if you like. dried. Okay that took a little longer to dry than expected. There are still some wet spots which you can probably tell because they're still kind of shiny just like here and a few down here that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and just dab off those areas now. It doesn't matter whether I pick up some of the colour off the items. Right, so that's got rid of the excess. And I just need to give it another quick blast. 
Okay, so that's the antique brown, which I thought was a bit more greeny than actually it is. Um, so now I'm going to add some proper green. So this is olive green. Oh, that's the one I thought it was. So let's grab some of that and then we can start adding that into here and just a little bit towards the top. So adding in a few of those kind of natural colours now. There we go. And because it's acrylic, once it's dry, it's permanent, so it doesn't mix. So that green has now mostly dried. As you can see, there's a few spots where <laughs> I've actually missed just on the top there. But that's okay. Don't mind that. It's a bit darker than I kind of anticipated, but that's fine. That's okay. Okay, so the next colour I'm going to add is that blue. So we're going to just take a couple of the drops of the blue and then I'm going to just activate those with some water. And then grab my brush. And then just allow that to kind of like move down. I don't mind if some spills over. That's okay. And then just where the bird is there, that's where that can come down. Get the edges. Just like that, just like that. And then we'll give that a blast. So the blue was a bit more intense than I actually wanted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a little run over with the water and just let that do its thing. Maybe add a few kind of like drips and drabs into it. There we go. Just let it run backwards and forwards as nature intended, or physics at least. <laughs> okay, so the blue is pretty much dry. So now we're going to add in that yellow color. So I'm gonna go a bit bright. On the beak, on the feet, and just on the breast, down here towards the bottom. There we go. And then we'll just activate that with a little bit of water, just like we've done with all the rest, and let, like I said, let nature take its course. Okay, so looking at it, I'm not happy with the yellowness of the yellow, if you know what I mean. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in um, some acrylic paints, which are a bit more opaque than those inks. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that. There's a true ochre colour. We'll just add some of that on 
onto the bird's tummy. A little bit more. Should have shook it up a bit more, I think. Now I know the original colour and mood board, it only really shows uh, like a little bit of a, like the ochre colour there, which is why I'm playing a little bit faster and loose, I suppose, with the original kind of mood board colours. But you know, the whole point of this is about being in inspired to create, not necessarily slavishly following exactly what's laid down for you. So, just do a little bit over the feet there. It's your interpretation of the mood board, what you're inspired to create based on what has been provided. So, okay, so that's covered that a bit better. Now before that dries I'm going to come in with a different yellow. This is bright yellow again from the Americana range and I've got a smaller brush this time. So again this paint is going to be a bit more transparent because it's yellow yellow. I'm just going to add some blobs. I think maybe I should have done the darker colour towards the wing actually. <laughs> Let's just blend that out a bit. I probably would have got a, got a better effect if I'd probably mixed it with a little bit of white paint first. There we go. Just a subtle change, but I think it makes all the difference. And I'm leaving the brush strokes in it. They probably won't dry um, raised or anything, but it just gives you that impression, I think, of a bit more texture. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty much dry now. So what I want to try and do is I want to try and unify everything together. So come back in with the white gesso. I've just had a look to see if I had any white, um, any titanium white, but I haven't. It's all gone. I've run out. My pots are empty. <laughs> so I'm going to use white gesso instead. So I'm going to take some white gesso Get it so it's almost dry and then I'm going to start picking out the detail and start lightening everything up. Okay, so I've dry brushed, lightened it all up a little bit so you can now see the contours of everything underneath. Now I just have to deal with the, the heart over there. 
Now I was going to use some of the red um, acrylic ink but I think instead I'm going to use acrylic paint which is a bit more opaque. This is the true red from the Americana so I'm just going to pick up a little bit and then we can start adding some of that to the project. If I go over the edge don't worry too much I can always come back in again with that gesso and just go back over the edges just to give it that frosted look again. But I think that will be just nicely. So we'll just let that sit for a minute. Ooh, the end of my brush has just fallen off. <laughs> I've got the world's smallest brush now. I'm only going to go the one coat. I think that's going to be enough, I think. Okay, so that's dry. So I'll just grab the dry brush, which I've left in the bathroom. So I'll have to use another one. Oh, let's have a look. That'll do. Grab some more of that white gesso. Just a tiny arm. And then we can come back in. There we go. And just reintroduce that kind of frosted edge to it. And if I want to add just a little bit more of the red, just in that middle. Just to diffuse it a bit more. There we go. If you can hear voices in the background, we have a, a chap who come to do a couple of repairs just on some of the um, the windows in the house that have on a little bit um, uh, loose if you like the handles are a bit loose and so he's just come to do that Ian's just talking to him at the moment while I'm hiding away <laughs> so let's just go one last one last blast over with the gesso and I think we're done I think Strengthen the white a little. I think now that we've got more white on the beak I can come back in with just a touch of that true yellow or bright yellow just grab a little bit and then we can just add a little bit just to the beak maybe just a little bit to the feet just add a little bit of contrast. Almost imperceptible. Let's grab a little bit of that white as well. I 
I'm happy with that, I think. Let's give it a quick blast, a quick, quick clean up, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so just before we finish, one last thing. I just want to add a little bit of shadow. And all I'm using is a charcoal pencil. So this is the dark one. So we'll just add a little bit of shadow just on those legs. Just there. Just to add a bit of definition. And just a real small amount under the wing there. And then maybe just a tad under there for grounding. Now with these, you can use any kind of brush <laughs> for the charcoal. So any kind of paintbrush. I find the ones that I've got like a, a stiffer bristle works better. See? But any kind of any kind of brush really. Actually have I got one with a better point on it. Maybe that one there. There we go. I think I think I'm happy with that. There we go. So let's just pop that away. And then I grab my pen. And then all I'm going to do is just quickly sign it down here at the bottom and date it, whatever today's date is, 21st. February 22 or I should have waited until tomorrow it would have been 22 to 22 there you go so that's it that's the um, artsy trio mood board painting for the whole project for this month all I have to do now is just stick that on the back so we'll use some of that grab and go glue So that I know what inspired me to create that page. So let's just make sure we get it the right way up. So I want to look at it that way. So lay it like that. And then just press that down. So the next time I open it up, it's going to be the right way up. So there you go. That's my Artsy Trio page for February stroke March 2022. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that 
video for the RC Trio collaboration. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking that button just underneath the video, just there. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.